Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. Over the last couple years, obviously one of the most exciting new technologies has been AI. And in the area of AI, AI generated art has definitely caught a lot of headlines. You've got tools like DALI 3 creating just mind blowing results. Uh, you've got other tools out there like Mid Journey and Stable Diffusion doing the same thing. The problem is how do they learn to create this wonderful art? And that is by more or less creating these giant data models trained off of the artwork of millions or millions of people uh, that has been scraped off the internet. Now, obviously, the people that don't like this that much are the artists whose work was used, especially when their work was used without compensation or uh, even permission. Uh, so we've actually seen some lawsuits here. So there is a class action lawsuit against Stability AI Midjourney and Deviant Art uh, from artists who basically said, we didn't permit to this. This is a violation of DMCA. You are using our work without our permission. And that is pretty much the only way that artists have had to fight back. Uh, and the sad thing is that that lawsuit is not actually going that great right now. The judge was on the verge of throwing it out. He sent it back to them basically wanting more direct uh, evidence here to continue on. So that is still ongoing, but it's not looking great. Now, there is a lawsuit out there uh, that I think is almost guaranteed to win, uh, and that is Getty Images. Now, Getty Images license images out. Uh, so that's literally their entire business. They own a huge, um, massive archive of like stock photos and images, etc., that they license to other people commercially. Commercially, and they have always been very litigious protecting their assets. And what you can see here, this is stable diffusion creating results showing that they were obviously trained without permission on Getty Images copyrighted collection because they're recreating the bloody watermark. And this was not an exception. We also saw this with ChatGPT for code generation where it was spitting out uh, copyright notices wholesale off of code that it took from GitHub, a code that was under, for example, a GPL license that you know you couldn't recreate without actually keeping the license with it. Uh, so this is one of the ones that I think is definitely going to have an impact. There's also some other legal ramifications such as Steam saying that AI generated art will not be allowed on games on Steam right now. Uh, so there is a fight back on the legal front, but from the technical front, artists haven't had much options. Well, they did have one choice out there, uh, and that is something called glazing. Now, glaze was a project, or is a project, by the University of Chicago, uh, and it's very interesting. You want to learn more details about Glaze, they're available right here. They kind of go into exactly how it works, but I'll actually show you more of a hands-on example. The thing about Glaze is it's available for free. There is a web version of it. You can sign up and upload your images and have them glazed. Uh, you also have the ability to download Glaze for Mac and Windows, available over here. So if you do want to check out Glaze, I will have details linked down below. But here is Glaze uh, from University of Chicago News, kind of showing exactly how it works. What it does is it makes these minuscule changes in the art that makes it so that these tools can't you know, figure out how things work. So here's a good example. And there is a cost involved here. Uh, so when you glaze an image, it is making small uh, and trained to be like imperceptible to the human eye, but it's not perfect. So there are three levels of cloaking here. Here is the original art, medium level or just low level cloaking, high level cloaking. And at first glance, it looks pretty similar, right? But when we start zooming in here, and I really want you to focus in around the face. So here you can see, this face area here, low cloaking. We got some like yellowing coming in here and a little bit of distortion going on right there that wasn't there in the original. So it's not perfect by any means. And then when you get too high, you're actually seeing some structural loss in the face itself. So right there, that detail is just being taken out. And this looks like someone put their thumb on the image and actually blotched it out. So at, at the zoomed out level, there's no real, it, it's not hugely perceptible. But if you're an artist, you don't want your work messed with. And that's the downside to uh, glazing your image. But this protection, what does this give you? So if you actually glaze your image, what will it do? Well, here is an example. This is a data set trained by one of the people on the team, Carla Orditz, her art. So here you can see her original art. And this gives you an idea of what AI can do. Basically, this was drawn with uh, training data of her art style, and they said, okay, now replicate it, say a dude with a shirt, and this is what they created. And that is that is the power of these AI generative arts. They can recreate the art style of any artist if they have enough training data, and they are getting good enough. Uh, again, they, do, they generally do a bad job with hands. There's a few things that they're not great at yet, but the technology is improving and improving and improving. And if you've got a world where you could say, create me some art like blah, 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 
and it just goes ahead and creates you art like blah, blah, blah did, well, why would you commission blah, blah, blah for art in the future? That's obviously why artists are a little bit uh, not enamored of this technology, to put it lightly. Well, here, this has been glazed, and this is what AI generated. So no glazing, it generated this image. Glazing, it generated this image image. So this is definitely a defense against AI art. Again, you pay a price, so you do have uh, some visual degradation of your image. And I know that's going to be a very bitter pill for some artists to swallow, but this does shield your image at the file level. So if you put it out there, that file, when a computer looks at it, looks completely different than when a human does it, and it screws up their data model. While this isn't about artists defending themselves, this is about artists fighting back. Well, the same group at U Chicago have come up with a new thing here called Nightshade. Now, Nightshade is basically taking up glaze, but they're making it an offensive weapon. And the funny thing is, this is actually using AI generative technology to create these images that will literally poison data sets. So this was announced earlier this week. It's not available yet. There is a, a preview of the research out there, but this is coming soon. So it is the team behind glaze. I'm assuming it's going to work very similar. So it's saying it's using a similar way of nightshade. So it changes pixels of the image very subtly that are invisible to the human eye. Well, invisible. We saw that from the early example. Not quite invisible, but definitely uh, harder to perceive. Uh, but they manipulate the machine learning logic to interpret it as something different than what it actually is. But the entire idea here is the more of these images you get into these giant data sets, uh, the more damage this will cause. So it exploits the security vulnerability in gener generative AI models arising from the fact that they are trained on vast amount of data. In this case, the images have been hoovered from the internet. Nightshade messes with those images. So uh, you can have it, you put it into your image, and then if it gets added to a data model, it causes that data model not only to not be able to recreate your art, but it does outright damage to the data model. So here, let's see, the, this is the Stable Diffusion XL data model, and they put 50 poisoned samples of a dog into it. And look what it does after 50 samples, so 50 things that have been nightshaded. This is how Stable Diffusion thinks you draw a dog. After 100, it's turning it more into an ugly cat. And after 300, Stable Diffusion now thinks that a dog is a cat. And that is the effect of this uh, nightshade. Now, again, it's not out something we can test our hands on, but this is a team behind Glaze, and Glaze works. So this seems to be uh, going on the offensive. Again, you see a car becomes a cow, a handbag becomes a toaster, a hat becomes a cake. Fantasy art ends up becomes pointillism. And this is probably one of the most impressive, cubism. So they were actually training. So if something goes, okay, create me something in the cubist style. Well, if it's had 300 gla uh, nightshaded samples injected into that data model, it's going to start drawing those things as anime. So if you get enough art that has been um, treated with nightshade, and then that art is hoovered up into a data model, it will corrupt that data model. And it's impressive for the amount of damage it does. So you can actually see some uh, real world examples where they did uh, poison, so clean versus poisoned. Fantasy art, clean model, poisoned art. A painting by Michael Wellen, fa uh, clean, poison. A dragon, clean, poison, and then a castle in Lord of the Rings, clean data model, and a poison data model. So this is really uh, the first offensive tool that artists have. They can take their images, and they can add nightshade into them, and then when a data model is reading these images to learn how to create something, it's learning wrong, and it's corrupting the rest of the data model. Uh, so what you're going to see is more and more images that have this nightshading behind them, uh, the less effective these data models will be. Now, this is going to turn into a cold war for sure because you're going to have the data models then fighting back, trying to prevent the poisoning, and then the, um, the nightshade team is going to have to add anti-detection logic in there or whatever, but this is interest. Now, what I do like about this as an approach is it only targets these um, these data models that hoover up your art without permission. So if you're taking an artist's work and they've put Nightshade into it and you've added to the data model, you've got it coming. It's sort of like if you pirate software that has a virus in it, uh, you can't call the support of the company behind it and say, oh yeah, this is a this deleted files on my hard drive. It's like, well, did you buy it from us? Oh, no, no, I pirated it off the internet. This is sort of the same thing, and it does give artists a tool to fight back against generative AIs. How well will it work? It'll be interesting to see, and I'm curious what you think of this technology. Let me know in the comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.